Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave, and this is the first train set I ever received. If you've been watching for a while, you may know that this is the first engine I ever received. I got it as a kid for Christmas, probably about 19... Don't remember exactly, uh, but that's not important. When I really started getting back into the hobby, I kind of look down my nose at this one because it's so featureless and basic. But now that I've been doing it for a while, I really do appreciate the nostalgia of still having my first train and being able to run it around a layout that I could never even have dreamed of as a kid. It's a Lionel 240 number 8300. The set number is 61 something something something. I'll check it and put it down below. This guy here has been through a lot through running on a small board in my room when I was very little, um, then being set up frequently on a ping pong table in my parents' basement. And that's where I believe I did the majority of running of this engine. Say what you want about the cheaper, lower end plastic locomotives, this thing took a beating. Most notably, a full speed dive off my ping pong table onto a concrete basement floor. I believe at that point is when I lost the smokestack, which I have replaced with this very handy piece of uh, paper straw that I colored black with a Sharpie. Very detailed. It, it does the job. So I'm happy with it. The only other thing I've done to this engine is service it and add a headlight. I would have loved if this thing had a headlight when I was a kid, but it's got one now, so that's good enough. When I started fixing trains, this is the first one I tried to service, and I just botched it all up. Uh, but then it still wasn't running, and I really didn't figure out why, and I just let it sit for a long time, because I figured, eh, I don't want to run it anyway. But then the nostalgia really hit me, and I was like, you know what? I want to run this train. So I took it back apart and found that the commutator face had oil residue on it from over-oiling of the armature shaft. So I cleaned that all up, put it back together, and it's running probably better than it has since I took it out of the box originally. Actually, I didn't take it out of the box originally. It was probably my father when he set it up uh, for Christmas morning. But I think I have a picture of that. It's, uh, I'm gonna put that right there. Um, I also have a picture that I found recently of one of my layouts on the ping pong table, which I'll throw in here too. And that was one, I don't know if it was for Christmas or just winter time, but I tried to duplicate snow uh, with a whole bunch of cotton balls, most likely taken out of the bathroom without uh, permission. I assume my mom wanted to know where all the cotton balls went. Well, they turned into snow on the layout. So what's special about this set? Not much, except that it's mine. It was the first one I had. It's uh, your basic 240, slope back tender, a little 9024 Chesapeake and Ohio flat car that's supposed to have black sp uh, black stakes that I'm, of course, lost by this point. A nice nickel plate road gondola and the Santa Fe caboose. Also, came with this transformer. Uh, I did eventually get a couple other cars, one of them being this Hershey plug door box car basic, it's light, it's plastic. I also had a red Swift uh, bank car, um, savings bank car, but I don't know where that is. I don't know if I gave that away at some point, uh, but oh well. So this is the train I ran for a long time. I think I kept the box because the box is kind of neat looking. It's got some pretty decent pictures on it. If I can read the tag properly in the corner there, it says, well, it says pay at Sporting Goods. Uh, I think it was from Bradley's. The price listed, $29.88. That was a lot more money then than it is today. Either way, I appreciate the fact that my parents got it for me and that I still have it. Sure, I wanted the post-war engines that my uncle or my grandfather had. Um, I would see their layouts and just drool over 
the amazing big steam engines. The great thing is though that now I have some of those. Uh, the ones that I watched go around the layouts as a kid, I have them now and can run them on my own layout. So that's, that's a nice, nice constellation prize to not having them when I was younger. I'll get this going around the track and then I'll show you how I put the headlight in it. Been a while since I took this apart. Just of course note the location of each one before you take it off. Maybe take a picture so that you put them back in the right spot. You put the side rods in the wrong spot and you have an engine that will not run properly. I just hot glued an LED into the housing and put a little glob on top of it to kind of act as a lens of sorts. So that's just hot glued in place. So it looks a little bit like a lens. The positive is just soldered on to the power that comes up from the center rail. The negative is soldered here to the contact for the, for the forward position of the switch. It was reverse, neutral, and forward. I would have been so happy as a kid to have an actual E unit in this thing. And just looking at it at the moment, I think I could put one in there. If I drill out the rivet that's holding the bracket, it kind of looks like one would fit. So I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure it matters, but it might be neat. So that's all there is to hooking up the LED for the light. It's just a power source and a ground source and you're good to go. When putting this engine back together, I find it easiest to line up this hole here, run the screw in but not all the way, and then put the side rods back on, making sure that this tab here on this arm goes behind the other one. Also there's a little spacer here, don't lose that. And then when you put the front truck back on, just note that there's a notch on each side, and that's where the rods go. And then these two tabs on this part fit in to grooves on the motor housing. You can tighten these two down all the way, flip it over, and then tighten the top. And a little socket would probably work a lot better for this and this pair of pliers, but what I have on hand. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.